hey everybody welcome back to my channel so today as you can see we are doing another favorites video this is going to be my winter faves and just fyi there's going to be no pregnancy related stuff in this video i'm saving up all of that for an entire pregnancy favorites video that will be coming out in the future at some point but this is just going to be a general favorites video of things that i have been enjoying reading watching playing doing using all of that good stuff and of course let's start with books so i finished listening to the anthropocene reviewed by john green and oh boy did i love this book some of the essays were really sad some of them were really funny some of them were just like <laughs> completely weird and random and i really loved just the kind of like journey it took you on of just like the highs and the lows and like just the emotional ups and downs of all of the different essays. Some of my favorite essays were the ones about Monopoly and Super Mario Kart. I don't know why the ones about games just like hit the spot for me for some reason. I also really loved the one about Piggly Wiggly and I loved the one about the plague as that felt like obviously very current. And then one that I wouldn't have predicted would have had an emotional impact on me was the one about football jersey dudex performance on may 25th 2005 that essay such a like specific thing about a sport i have mild interest in and oh, did it get me did it tug at my heartstrings the main one though that really got me uh crying <laughs> i remember i was just like walking home and just listening to the googling strangers essay and just tears streaming down my face and just thinking how dare you john green how dare you i don't want to give anything away about that essay but oh boy was it a journey but yeah i loved that book i think it's one that even though i listened to the audiobook version i might want in the future at some point to get a physical copy of it to be able to kind of like flip through and reread some of the essays the next book that i read recently that is absolutely a favorite like an immediate five stars is the house in the cerulean sea it was just so magical and wholesome and i just felt like every page that i was reading just like constantly just like oh <laughs> just witnessing the journey that our main character the narrator goes on and the impact that these magical children have on him and then of course like the adults who are looking after them as well also this book is super queer if that's something that you're interested in in the books that you read there is one thing though that was in the book that i'm like not sure how i feel about it because it kind of like took me out of the story every now and then which is all of the comments on the main character's weight and size and when the children are talking about his size they're doing it in this really like lovely matter of fact like non-judgmental way which i really liked i couldn't tell if it was actually really great body neutrality or if there were still some remnants of like fat phobia there or like internalized shame and stuff around his weight i'd be interested to know what other people's thoughts are about that part of the book because it definitely took me out of the story whenever it came up i was like is this relevant do we need this but on the whole absolutely adored this book okay i have some tv favorites the first is the 20 year harry potter reunion i cried multiple times <laughs> watching this i cannot believe it's been 20 years since those films came out like what on earth i also just want to note that jk rowling does appear in the documentary but it's old interview clips she didn't film anything new for it and it's like a minute here and then like 30 seconds there the rest of it is very much focused on the cast of the movies i was absolutely bawling when they were talking about and showing the clips of our three main characters on their last day of filming and when they like wrapped their last shot and you're just seeing these teenagers these adults who have spent the last 10 years of their life like making these movies and they're just like uncontrollably crying because it's like the end of this huge chapter of their life and that just 
got me. But there were also lots of like really fun moments in it as well. Like the chemistry between Daniel Radcliffe and Helena Bonham Carter. I was like, oh my God, I would watch these two host something. I would like listen to a podcast that these two host together because they are so funny together on screen. It was brilliant. And obviously you don't get to see that with like Harry and Bellatrix, but the, the actors, I was like, oh wow, these two like really get on and this is great. And then of course there was the Emma Watson and Rupert Grint moment. Just the love, the friendship, I'm just, I'm obsessed. My next TV favorite is Gordon Ramsay's Uncharted. Dan watched season one and so he made me sit down and watch season two with him and I mean, a travel food show. We both really like Gordon Ramsay. It's kind of completely ridiculous, but I just love seeing all of the food. And he goes to like so many really interesting places and meets a local chef from the area and learns about like sourcing food and different ingredients and flavors from those areas and then like cooks it all up and mm. Yum. Next up, I have some film favorites. The first is Don't Look Up, which is that Netflix film that everyone's been talking about that's an analogy for climate change where there's like a big meteor that's about to crash into the earth and wipe out the entire planet. Fun. It's a bit of a miserable film, but also manages to be really funny. It's definitely preaching to the choir in terms of like the politics angle of it. Meryl Streep's character as the president of the United States is just like so brilliant and so infuriating. <laughs> Would recommend if you haven't seen it yet. Finally got round to seeing Spider-Man No Way Home like a month or two after it came out and had somehow avoided spoilers and I won't <laughs> be doing any spoilering now but it was so fun. It pulled on the heartstrings. I love Spider-Man. It was great. <laughs> That's all I'll say. I very much enjoyed it and I'm very glad that I managed to avoid spoilers so I could just like experience everything for the first time in the cinema. And then my final film favourite isn't a recent one at all but it just became available on Netflix and I hadn't seen it yet and I was very excited because I'd been wanting to see it for ages and that is Emma, the 2020 one, the more recent one. My only context for the story of Emma is clueless. And so I was watching it being like, oh, that's that character, that's that plot point. Okay, I got it, just like referencing clueless throughout. But I absolutely adored it, like the costumes, the sets, absolutely stunning. And also Anya Taylor-Joy's facial expressions, like that woman can act, like so good. Next up, I have an app favorite and it is the one second everyday app. So my friend Sierra on the 1st of January put out her like one second a day video from last year and oh, oh my God, it was so beautiful. And I was just like, I want one of those for myself. And so I immediately downloaded the app and I've just been like taking clips here and there each day. I have been finding it more difficult <laughs> than I thought. And I also think that it's actually <laughs> just depicting a very boring life. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a lot of clips of like my TV and food. <laughs> That's kind of like the majority of it at the moment. But Sierra had a baby last year and I'm having a baby this year. And even if it's not something that I like share publicly at all, it's just something that I really want for myself. Cause I think it would just be a really lovely thing to like capture this year for myself. And then also just for close family as well. But yeah, I'm currently using the free version of the app because I haven't needed to like download anything without the watermark. I'm hoping that basically at the end of the year, I just need to like pay once and then I can like download everything without any watermarks or stuff. We will see. And I also find it really useful that you can make the app send you notifications towards the end of the day to remind you if you haven't done your one second a day because that has definitely helped me a few times, like could have gone to bed without having done it at all. Next, I have a whole bunch of games favorites. And the first one is, of course, Wordle. Yes, I am fully committed. I'm fully on the Wordle train. Like how long is this going to last? I have no idea, but I'm enjoying it. It is like fully part of my morning routine. Like I will do my Wordle whilst I eat breakfast. <laughs> Just think it helps like wake up my brain. And then also in our Patreon Discord server, we have like a whole games channel where we talk about all sorts of different games and 
Wordle was just like taking over of everyone's like green and yellow squares of people posting their Wordles that we had to create <laughs> a separate thread specifically for Wordle. Thoroughly enjoying it. I even have a WhatsApp group now with my mum and my gran where we share our Wordles every day. I'm also doing a daily Taylor Swift specific Wordle and a Hogwarts specific Wordle. And then I've also started trying the like Dawdle, I think it's called. The one where you're still guessing one word, but you're trying to guess two words. Oh, I'm so in. I mean, we will see what happens with this like New York Times buyout situation, but I'm just enjoying it for free for now for as long as I possibly can with my streak. I've only failed it twice. Sad about those two times, but we continue. We keep going. We keep striving. The next game I want to talk about is one that was just a massive hit with my family at Christmas, and that is snakes. <laughs> and this was actually gifted to me from Big Potato Games, but it was such a big hit that my sister like wanted it for herself. So I bought her <laughs> snakes as well so she can play with her friends. But it's like a four to eight player game. So you do need like a group of people for it. And this has been sat in our flat for like a year because Dan and I haven't really been seeing anybody, but we took it to Christmas with us, not knowing anything about this game. And it was just like, hey, got a game. Let's see what it is. Oh my God, what a hit. So let me see if I can explain this. It's like a trivia quiz. There is like one question per round and it's like multiple choice. And you're all trying as a group to try and guess what the correct answer to that question is. However, some of you are snakes which basically means that you know, the snakes know what the correct answer is. And they're trying without being detected to make all of the normal people, the non-snakes to get it wrong. If you are into the kinds of games that involve a lot of like talking and discussion and like deception, that kind of stuff, honestly, amazing. We love this game and we played it loads over Christmas. Also over Christmas, I did a bunch of puzzles. I have not done jigsaws in so long and I absolutely love them. When I was at my parents with my mum and my granny, we did a 1000 piece Frida Kahlo puzzle that was just stunning and so satisfying. And we did it in a day off. Oh. And then when we went to see Dan's family, his sister, my friend Bethan had got, also from Big Potato Games actually, um, this puzzle that was a jigsaw puzzle, but then also like a guessing game. Um, Cause big potato games, they just love to make things extra and I'm so here for it. But the puzzle that we did at hers was like a festival scene and it was all like cartoon abstract, like different things going on and hidden in the puzzle were 101 different like bands, artists, musicians. And it was like a riddle to solve. So we like, did the puzzle and then we're like looking at the image and being like oh that's that band and that's meant to be that band and oh it was so fun and so satisfying and actually we got to the point where we'd like guessed as many as we could and we were like stuck on a whole bunch of them and somebody just some random person had made a Spotify playlist of <laughs> tracks from all of the artists on the puzzle and so then we went through and like listened to them to see if the songs would like help us be like, oh, right, I know who that is now. It was a lot of fun. Next, I have some fashion faves. This is my Taylor Swift all too well red scarf. I am not the kind of person who really buys much like merch from bands or artists that I like. But when I saw this on the Taylor Swift merch store for the red era, I couldn't not. One, because it's just a great color red and a beautiful scarf. And I knew that it would go with a lot of my winter wardrobe, but also because obviously the song All Too Well is iconic and obsessed with the 10 minute version. And now my whole way that I understand time is in like, oh, that's gonna take me like three All Too Wells to get there. And now I have my All Too Well scarf as well. And I love it. Also, I love merch that doesn't like look like merch. So it's got like a little label on the side that just says Taylor Swift and all too well, but you can't really see that. It's just like a very lovely red scarf. And this pile of clothes is my next fashion favorite. This is a full on just like loungewear outfit 
from this brand called Cocozy. I think that's how they pronounce it. And this is another business of the woman who designed and made my wedding dress. We were visiting her studio in Birmingham just before Christmas because she had turned her shop into this like curiosity shop where she had loads of jewelry and homeware and all sorts of amazing things from lots of local and independent Birmingham artists and small businesses. So we were doing like our Christmas shopping there, but then I saw these. <laughs> <laughs> and it's handmade, entirely customizable loungewear. So I tried on a few options and then I just got to like create my custom order. So like the color, the cut, the sleeves, the legs, the like what kind of pocket I wanted, like all sorts of things. They did have yellow, but I thought that that would be a bit too much <laughs> and I ended up going with blue, but I have been living in these. I absolutely love them. They are so comfy and so so soft and I may have also like worn them out of the house <laughs> many times as well. But yes, this was my Christmas present to myself and I absolutely love them. And finally in our stuff miscellaneous section because I never know how to categorize things, I got a few other bits and bobs I wanna show you. The first is I got a new phone. I didn't necessarily want to get a new phone. I dropped my old <laughs> iPhone in the toilet and it stopped working and so New Year's Day, I was off to the Apple store and I got myself the iPhone 13. I'd previously had the 10S. I think, so now I have the newest one, which feels very fancy. Even though my 10 was working until I dropped it in the toilet, I am actually very glad that I made this upgrade because oh my God, the battery life on this thing, the battery, I didn't realize how bad I had it. And I know that's entirely Apple's fault. And you know, they're making me like buy a new phone every few years, but you know, I can't be mad about it for too long because now, now I've got a nice new shiny phone. But then I also, thought I would experiment with this like MagSafe charging situation. And I love it. I just have the one so far, but I feel like I'll probably get one or two more just to kind of like have in different rooms of the flat and maybe one in the studio as well. So I just like always have somewhere to be like boom, boom, boom. But yes, little tech fave here. And then of course I still had to have like a Galaxy pop socket and then this one is like magnetized because obviously I still need to have like access to the MagSafe charging bit but it's worked really well like it still feels like really sturdy it's only fallen off once and that was literally this morning because it fell out of my pocket and just like banged on the floor and the thing fell off but other than that like feels great next up is a very glamorous hand cream. So I have been suffering throughout the pandemic with all of the hand washing and the hand sanitizer and then winter comes along and I just get crusty hands, crusty knuckles and it was just getting to the point where it was like actually looking like red and sore and the hand cream that I was using just was not cutting it. It was like body shop stuff that like smelt great, but it clearly just did not absorb. It was clearly very surface level. And I'd be like applying this stuff just like constantly throughout the day. And so I went to my trusty Patreon Discord server and I was like, hey guys, I need some hand cream recommendations. And a whole bunch of people said, working hands, hand cream. And so I got this from Boots and put it on my hands just the one time and immediately was like, oh, this is different. And so now instead of applying hand cream throughout the entire day, I literally like put a small amount on in the morning and then I put a small amount on before I go to bed and oh, just like, like instant noticeable improvement. I don't usually talk a lot about like skincare or beauty <laughs> products because I honestly don't know what I'm talking about, but holy shit, this guaranteed relief for extremely dry, cracked hands. Honestly, amazing. And then also because I only need to use it in the morning and in the evening, I don't have to carry this around with me because I was like, oh no, they don't have a smaller size. Well, guess what, Hannah? You don't need a smaller size because you don't need to actually use it throughout the day. Excellent. Thank you to my patrons for this excellent recommendation. And then my final fave is these very simple and very silly bottle lights that my auntie got me for Christmas. But I've been loving using these as mood lighting in our living room throughout the dark 
months. It's intended to go in a wine bottle because the bit with the battery and the switch is basically like a cork shape. But as you can see, that one needs the batteries changing. It is not lighting up very well anymore. Um, but we also have this like multicolored one that I put in a jam jar and then this like white light one that looks very white woman Instagram vibes. But hey, I love it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments if you've also read or watched or played any of the things that I've mentioned. And also feel free to share some of your own winter favorites. I hope that you're doing well and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.